you're looking for a guide for Eula, we're going to give you a guide for Eula here, guys. Everything you need to know on top of them things that you probably don't think you need to know. You're going to figure those ones out and you're going to learn about those ones today as well. So let's get right into it. The big mistake that you guys could be making out there is not fully understanding the importance of her ascensions and how to use them properly. What are her ascensions, mind you, you may ask me. Yeah, it does damage and stuff and it resets the cooldown. Is this a big deal? Yeah, it's a big deal because it kind of forms the backbone of what you do with this character outside of spam your main attack button, right? She does more than just spam physical attacks. So Ice Tide Vortex, you guys know what this does already. There's two versions, press version, hold version. Press gives you Grimheart stacks. Hold version has a longer 10 second cooldown that consumes the Grimheart stacks and does a physical and cryo AOE resistance down around Eula. But on top of that, once you have Rolling Rhyme, it's going to summon a mini version of her elemental burst, the Light Fall Sword. It does 50% of the base damage here. So you have this bad boy leveled up to 10, base damage is 725%. You get half of that every single time you use the hold version. The second one here, Wellspring of Warlust, is also very important because you don't want to be left hanging with this 10 second cooldown on your hold. No, 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 no. You want to avoid that as many times as possible. So what this does is when you use your elemental burst, it resets the cooldown of your E and gives you one stack of Grimheart right away. And this is kind of where the one, two, three burst combo comes from. So you spend your first eight seconds, right? You use your E, the press version, you get your first stack of Grimheart. You use your press version again. You have your second stack of Grimheart. Okay. Your cooldown's ready to go. You use your hold. You summon the mini rolling rhyme. Then you pop off your elemental burst right away. It's going to reset the cooldown of your E, give you a stack. You use your press version right away, back to two stacks. And then four seconds later, you use the hold version again. And you're going to be dropping two rolling rhymes in your elemental burst, plus all of your physical attacks that you're doing with her normal combos. And then you're gonna have the buffs up, right? The debuffs from the Ice Tide Vortex, right? In the buffs from possibly Pale Flame Four Piece, if you are using that. And then once those were off, you're gonna swap over to your supports where you summon Oz Official, put up your Zong Lee barrier, your Diona barrier, whatever support characters you're using, reuse Beto's Elemental Burst, all of that stuff you're gonna be doing in the downtime where you cannot avoid, right? The downtime of the 10 second cooldown skill there. So. Make sure you are following that. There was obviously some gameplay in the background, so you guys could follow that as well. Now, one small tip for actually using Eula in combat and being able to keep track of your Grimheart stacks, there's two ways that you can keep track of them. So when you have a Grimheart stack up, the first time you use it, you get that little sword icon that pops there. Now, in case you forget, because you swap off, you're doing some other stuff because the stacks are still there. If you swap back into it, it's going to temporarily remind you they still have that stack there. Another thing is that her cape will change. So you see how it's kind of like, pulsing a tiny bit there get my second stack and now it's now it's very much on on uh it's very cryo -y now right it's very cryo -y now so if i swap over zongli swap back two swords good to go got this cryo -y cape and i'm i'm dropping ice everywhere right so if i get rid of these stacks that's your normal blue looking cape and obviously no swords anymore so keep that in mind there that's how you keep track of that in the middle of combat look for the swords you find that easier than the cape Whatever way works for you guys is going to be whatever way that works for you. So there you guys are All right, those basic things out of the way. Let's get into artifacts, main stats, substats, weapons, all that good stuff there. And then obviously partners. So artifact sets, two different sets that you guys can run here. You can run the double two piece, pale flame and bloodstained chivalry. This gives you 50% physical damage bonus 100% of the time. This is the set that you're going to want to wear if you don't want to ever have to worry about Keeping track of stacks are bad at that. Maybe you're playing a mobile, maybe you're lagging, you got 2G out there somewhere, right? You don't know how to really maintain the stack thing. Um, that's something that you should definitely think about there. So if you have better rolled uh, bloodstained stuff too, then that's going to really play a part. Like if you have like a really ball and feather with a bunch of crit damage or a bunch of crit chance and crit damage for a bloodstained feather, but you don't have something that's good on the plume set, uh, then go ahead and definitely, 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 definitely don't worry about going full four piece pale flame although you can go full four piece pale flame but like we talked about there that's going to be a very nice set and what do you get for going full four piece pale flame what's the big ruckus about so if you go full four piece pale flame the only difference here is you're getting 18 percent attack and you are still going to maintain that 50 percent physical damage but it's conditional you cannot let these stacks wear off so she does like you said have that 10 second cooldown on her elemental 
skill on the whole diversion. So what you want to do is minimize that almost to no downtime whatsoever. The only time you should really be in combat with Eula without full stacks with the Pale Flame set is when you're getting your first uh, initial ramp up of getting your stacks back on Grimheart from zero, right? You have zero stacks of Grimheart, you use your E, okay, four seconds later, you use your E again, you two stacks of Grimheart, two stacks of this, good to go. Then you hold, you use your L1 burst, you use your press, you use your hold again, and then you're still gonna have this buff as has been refreshed multiple times that entire time for seven seconds. After that, you swap out during those last three seconds, reapply your shield, resummon Oz, do all this other stuff, and you come back and you start all over again. All this does, all that work is for 18% attack, guys. And 18% attack is nice, and it does help out her burst because you're gonna have all this up during, you know, expunging her hold skills times two plus her elemental burst. It's still gonna be applicable to all that stuff. So you're gonna see higher burst damage out of her elemental skill and elemental burst, but it's only 18% attack, and that's not gonna outweigh you just having better rolled artifacts for the double two piece set. So if you have better rolled artifacts for the double two piece, go ahead and utilize that. And so that's really what's gonna be the deciding factor between it. are you going full four piece pale or are you going double two piece? If you have better rolled artifacts, main stat, sub stats for the double two piece, do that. If you have better stats for the double, for the full four piece, do that. The other thing is if you don't wanna you know mess around and keep track of all these stacks and stuff going on, it's not that hard, but if it sounds daunting to you, go for the double two piece on top of that. You're only losing 18% attack during your big burst window. Now, what about main stats, sub stats? What are we looking for here? So obviously the goblet here, I've seen it. Do I do cryo goblet? Do I do, no, you do physical goblet. The vast majority of your elemental skill and elemental burst damage are going to be physical damage. The light fall swords are physical and that is not only her elemental burst, but it's also that ascension that's got a very high multiplier on your elemental skill on the hold version. So that's gonna be amazing there. Then obviously all of your physical attacks are going to be physical damage. So you're gonna go for that one there. Attack percent sands is definitely what you're aiming for here. And then crit rate, crit damage, um, circlet. What one you use is dependent on what stat you're missing the most. So if you're running around and you don't have uh, enough crit chance, right? You wanna always get the magical one, two to one ratio for every one crit chance, get two crit damage. That's about the magic ratio. If you can follow that ratio all the way up, you're gonna be in for a good time, but at least try to get 50, 55 crit right there. Don't be running around with a 20, 25, you know, crit rate, uh, 295 crit damage build. It, the numbers might look nice, but your average damage is going to suffer mathematically. So you don't wanna do that there either. So substats that you're looking for here, since we have the main stats down for you guys, you've guessed it, more crit chance, more crit damage, and then some attack percent as well. So attack percent, crit damage, good right crit chance as well try to get it up to that 50 55 percent that's going to help you guys determine what is best for you you get some energy recharge here and there that is also pretty good because her energy are you know takes a while to fill it costs 80 80 energy it's pretty expensive but it has a 20 second cooldown which gives you a lot of time to fill that up so if you get like you know 20 30 percent energy recharge that's gonna help you out a ton there when it comes to filling up her energy bar for her elemental burst now weapons guys weapons i'll have a brief overview of what's good here i do have a full video of all the weapons literally all versus each other mathematically broken down refinement versus different refinement ranks different rarities all of that stuff here so tldr real quick weapons that you do not want to use whatsoever uh the bell the rain slasher don't want to use that thing you don't want to use um wild looking sacrificial great sword or favonius great sword no 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 none of those are what you're using here those are all bad 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 weapons so ones that are good right right off the gate serpent spine it's gonna be one of the best four stars if not the best four star weapon that you're gonna be putting on him even at refinement rank one look at her face she's ready to go down sets this weapon looking a little ugly but i mean you turn away right you're not looking at it when you play the game you're looking this way so it's going to be okay there so fantastic four star weapon check that one out for sure hands down now prototype uh star silver or the prototype of the archaic are both very good literally neck and neck with each other they're white blind at high refinement ranks only so if you've been using a while well, but you're not using her in the party with eula uh you want to do like a tanky build if you have literally r4 r5 only you can do that but it, it still loses out all of these to the serpent spine now five star weapons here all of them are good for certain things. So the most consistent weapon 
is the unforged it's going to always have these stacks up very easy to get assuming you are using someone that gives you a shield which we'll go over when we talk about having good friends for Yula Zhongli and Diona or some of her best friends in the game depending on what it is you're trying to accomplish if you're using a shielder it's gonna give you the most consistent damage uh out of all the different five star weapons that are available that's because the other ones are very proc dependent so wolf's gravestone has the highest potential for damage in the game only maybe neck and neck with the new one that's on her banner the brand new uh, i want to call it song of the broken spire but that's not what it is it's called something else I'm, i sound really bad right now but the, it's the song sword the new song claymore also very good now those ones there are very proc dependent right so the wolf's gravestone will do less damage on average than the unforged but once you hit something under 30 percent hp it's going to give you that big attack percent buff and then it's going to have huge damage potential during that 12 second proc window same thing for the new claymore there you get that extra attack speed which is going to help you get a couple extra stacks of your elemental bursts a nice little light fall sword buff there so it's going to help you out there so it's going to increase the damage during the burst window and it's going to give you a little bit of an attack percent as well now the skyward pride here uh when you're not inside the actual right when you're not throwing around now the skyward pride here is going to do the least damage flat out most of the time because it's got energy recharge on it which can help you out especially if you have a very low energy recharge ability to get that 100 percent elemental burst up time that's a huge bonus there especially in certain situations where it's very hard to get that energy for your elemental burst on top of this though outside of using it right after the elemental burst where you get these nice vacuum blades the vacuum blades if you're hitting multiple enemies with them it can be an incredibly powerful weapon but if you're going mono a mono with one person your elemental burst isn't activated yet you're just hitting it it's going to be the lowest dps of all the five star weapons but if you're fighting multiple dudes and you're in your elemental burst all the time it's very situational but it's still very very good but for more weapon details and all the math and stuff all of it broken down by the numbers everything versus everything go check out the other video i'll have it linked in the description for you guys when it comes to this character's weapon choices in genshin impact now talent priority this one's going to be a hard pill for you guys to swallow especially because uh it's not particularly easy to level this up right now because this 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 boss has only been around for maybe a month uh so you can't 10 10 10 everything but she is a very picky girl she wants you to max everything most of her damage right her consistent damage is coming from her normal attack you want to max this out so she does more damage with her normal attack amazing ice tide vortex here you want to max this out not really for the damage but because it has the physical resist down and then obviously the elemental burst here is also very important right it's a 20 second cooldown but it does a ton of damage here because you're kind of double dipping triple dipping actually with the multipliers when you level this thing up you have the base damage skill damage you see there 442 percent at level 10 base light fall sword damage 725 and then the damage per stat goes up you get up to 30 stacks now you're not hitting this 30 stack cap at c zero one two three you have to be c6 to even have a chance or a prayer to get to those 30 stacks there uh but outside of that you're still going to be able to get like 10 15 stacks that's a lot of damage that you're missing out on if you don't level this up also keep in mind her ascension rolling rhyme here it's 50 percent of the base damage of the light false sword of the physical part so you get 50 percent of the light false sword base damage when you use your hold on your e so she wants everything leveled up as you can see i chose to do 10 and then 6 6 my next thing i'm going to level up to 10 is going to be my normal attack and then ice tide vortex will probably be the final thing that i put out there so last but definitely not least on the eula list teammates for eula so first thing you're going to want to have there is some sort of electro character you have some very solid options uh the first one that comes to mind here is fischl obviously everyone knows fischl off right the map doing damage applying electro over and over and over with oz good stuff there love this character very good you can also uh uniquely build her more so than any of the other electros we're going to go over or the tenacity of the millet set that's here so anytime oz is doing his attack he's going to be procking this set over and over and over so if oz is on the battlefield you have this 30 percent shield strength buff 20 percent attack buff for official eula whoever is in the party everybody uptime as long as oz is alive and out there doing his thing so very cool build that's how i'm actually using her right now with this set in a certain party but kind of really good for the shield strength buff so if you're using her with like diona very strong stuff there now another electro character that you might be thinking about here 
Yeah, I know, man. Uh, Lisa, Lisa, Lisa could be somebody that you could be using here and you would use Lisa for a couple of reasons. So her talent, Lightning Rose, very long cooldown, 20 seconds, but coincidence enough that lines up right with Eula's Limit Burst. So what does this do here? So it's going to be an AoE Electro thing. But what's really cool here is the Ascension she has. Not only is she going to be proccing Superconduct, with Eula, but she's going to give everyone 15% defense down for 10 seconds, which is more than enough time for you to drop all of your, your hold ease into your elemental burst, stack your swords, have it hit, hit another hold E. So that's going to be very powerful there for you right there. And then if you want to proc superconduct uh, over and over and over, she has a very easy access E here. You just swap into her. It's got a one second cooldown on a press. Never hold this because it's got like a 16 second cooldown on a hold. So press it one second, throw it at somebody, superconduct them, go wreck them. Build her for high energy recharge if you are using her, though, uh, because it costs 80 energy. So she's going to be able to need to get that energy there. Uh, another high energy recharge character that you guys be using there is a Beidou. Beidou, I think, is actually a character I've wanted to work on for a long time now on this account. And uh, this is going to be a reason, I think, that I'm going to run her. So you're also going to run a high energy recharge a Beidou. You can put some damage into her, too, but you not that you need that energy because once again, 20 second cooldown. 80 energy cost elemental burst here. Now, what this does though is a couple of things. So it's gonna be very good at proccing superconduct with the Thunder Beast charge here. So it's gonna be shooting lightning bolts everywhere, right? It's gonna be like multiple Oz's. It's gonna be like an Oz infestation. But on top of that, it's also going to go ahead and give you damage reduction on top of that. So this is gonna help you reduce the amount of damage your shield takes if you're using a shielder, which we'll talk about in a minute because I really like shields. I think shields are getting uh, even more liked by the general populace, people who use the big shielders like Zhongli and Diona. Very strong stuff coming from those characters and very good, coincidentally enough, with Eula on top of that. So Zhongli needs no introduction, very strong character, insanely strong shield here protects you, keeps you healthy, lets you be as offensive as you want to be because you have a shield that protects you from literally everything. And then on top of that, 20% more cryo and 20% more physical resist down on your enemies while that shield is up. So very cool stuff there. Now the other character, Diona. Diona, Diona, Diona. Diona is very strong on top of this. Same thing, build it for some big HP. Unlike Zhongli, she can heal. Zhongli can at C6, but if you have uh, Zhongli at C6, Congratulations. Uh, but this one here, giant, giant shield with icy paws. And then you also have more cryo applications here. Now, if you're running Diona as your healer of choice, you're also going to have times two cryo as your uh, Eula is also cryo. And that's going to give you 15% more crit chance against people who are afflicted by cryo. So that's going to help you, especially with signature mix being added into the mix there. And then icy paws. If you're a dragon striker yes it's still in the game i don't know why people are still saying it's not in the game or got taken out i did it literally today um it gives you a movements buff due to the secret menu and you can actually dragon strike with eula in diona in the same party so bonus crit rate big shields have a healer dragon strike enabled yeah it's pretty good it's a pretty good partner for you there as well now another good cryo partner here is actually going to be a the girl rosaria now this is gonna be like more of a support rosaria what you would do here is you build her specifically you don't need her to do a ton of damage but you want her to have as much crit as possible for shadow samaritan this is going to give you a lot of free crit rate on your eula because eula's cryo rosaria's cryo so 15 percent free crit rate against crowd enemies but then shadow samaritan here when you cast rites of termination if she's got really high crit rate you've guessed it you can give up to another 15%. So 30% free crit rate to your Eula. That's a lot. That's a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff there. So another character that would be very good with a very specific high crit rate build. Right determination is going to be pulsing that cryo. So enemies going to be cryo. You're going to get 30% up to crit rate uh, from your team there, which is going to be very, very nice for Eula for consistent damage. You could also build around that if you really wanted to. Um, but you just crit every hit. Make sure all of your elemental bursts crit. Very strong build. Very nice partner there. And then obviously Nightwalk, this doesn't really matter, but you can also Nightwalk and use the Dragon Strike technique because if you're outside messing around, you can Dragon Strike at night right there because 10% more movement speed. So that's very cool stuff there. Now there's also the Pyro candidates here. We have Shinyan, very cool. We have Sweeping Fervor here. This is gonna give you 15% increased physical damage, right? If you're using 
her and have her shield activated you can swap over to eula 15 percent more damage there and then if you have constellations wildfire the rhythm is going to give 15 percent physical resist down on top of superconduct or zongli shield that's going to stack additively with that and then if you also have c4 then you have c2 and you can build shinyan as like a secondary elemental burst character so you can do all of the eula combos right then once you're done with all of eula's damage you go okay shinyan come here and she drops it Riff Revolution hit him for, you know, 50, 60, 70, 80. If you build for a mono crit damage team, up to like 100 and something K I've hit for before. So, yes, another solid option for you there. Victor, I like to run a lot here, as well as Albedo. He just is a guy in the back, just like official, right? He's just back there doing their own thing. You can plant his flower, you can do a bunch of damage, and you can come out and do your, your elemental burst there. So, I have mine built for the big old defense percent, high crit chance, high crit damage build. And another thing that is cool about Albedo is he also works very well with tenacity of the milliset set if you do have that rolled up there you get some defense percent you get some crit chance get some crit damage in there throw it on him because he can plant his flower move his flower whenever it is that he wants to move his flower so he's also very good at using the tenacity set so keep that in mind for him as well and hopefully guys this gave you guys a solid opportunity to really dive deep in what it is uh eula mechanic wise as well as gear wise don't forget to check out the weapon video if you haven't and don't forget keep finding yourself somehow on this channel over and over get that hit that subscribe button and i'll see you guys in the next one take care guys